We do brach ya as we bow before him in supplication. To acknowledge that he is the great I am. And he has entered in among his people. It is signified by the depth of wisdom understanding that the messenger of Yah, the Melech, how he speaks. And how he brings forth the wisdom of that instruction to a house that he has elected. By his great sovereign's power, there is no rule over Yah. Even the counsels of his great melachim and great messengers have no power to dictate. He grants unto them the beauty of friendship. Not as servants, but friends, as Yahshua grants unto us as a nation. I call you no more Evadim. Those that simply wait on every action that I speak, command, that you must be instructed, I give you the freedom of the great Hafiz, the pleasure of Yah, that you may please Him in your offerings. And so instead of calling you servants, I call you Re'ach, friends. I like that. What a friend we have in him. For he never leaves us nor forsake us. And I'm so glad of that, Yisraya. I'm glad. And as a young, ignorant man, as I stand today, still ignorant, I've gotten a little older. And in the midst of all of that ignorance of denial, he still had his hands on me. And I'm glad. There's a reason why. There's a purpose in all that he does. He does nothing half-heartedly. We may. He never does anything. That's why he commands of us to achab, to have him with Cool or the essence of what he has placed in us, our mind, our heart, and the living power or the high yield of life. That is what the nefesh represents. It is high yield. It is the strength of life, the ability to war and to fight, to be strong as we are directed according to Torah, the principles of his mind. And that's all Torah is. It is the principle, the mitzvah, are simply the principles of his mind. They are the principles of his mind. Yoshua Habashiach, he is the living power of those principles. That's why he could not be allured away from the principles of Yah. He could not sin. He was full of the Ruach HaKodesh. He was full of Yah's life. And when we as a nation of people become full of the riches of the substance of his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, his fear, his favor and his love, we will not so casually disavow and sin so prematurely with willingness we'll obey what he commands us and that will be a great delight in obeying what Yah commands we will take great pleasure that he has commanded you and of all the people of the earth he has chosen a small remnant <clears throat> represents such a small fragment numerically they can hardly be identified they can and because we are not the fruit bearers that we should bear so it's difficult for us to know who is of Yisrael 
So we're intrigued by emotions and feelings. We are intrigued by our emotionalism and our feelings. We think that that one is of Yah and that one is far from Yah. And that's the truth. I'm going to teach today. <clears throat> we greet you all that have joined us by the via of the live stream broadcast. Whether it's by the audio or visual. And also as our Zachin Harami, I would say, our small low powered radio station here. WVOY, Word Voice of Almighty Yahweh. We greet you on this pleasant Jabatont, time of great rest, that we can grow fat, we can grow healthy, we can grow strong as we are emboldened because we are enabled by hearing Jemak. We know by the power of the ability to hear that it causes the Emun, the power to trust Yah, to believe Him. To take great delight in his purpose for us. Because we know that our lives are as a vapor of smoke. It is a momentarily thing, Israel. It's here for the moment. And then it is dissolved. It's gone. And so he emboldens us by causing us to hear. We don't hear well, Israel. As I was up early this morning, my mind pondered the idea, the fact that one can speak to one about a certain thing of certainty. And because we miss one of the key elements, the components of that sentence, we lose the whole perspective. And so we don't labor to understand. We're surrounded by unlearned, ignorant men. They look ignorant. I know I'm ignorant, but I don't want to look ignorant. You understand? These men look ignorant. There's no power of his hukma that resonates, that flows. Because the countenance, the poor name of that man doesn't represent the fruitfulness of one's betim, the belly. It doesn't represent that. You can look at the tree and see the roots. You can look at the tree and see the results because of how it is rooted. And because one is not rooted and grounded in the Ahava of Yah, one is not planted by the rivers of waters, then there is no fruit bearing. The fruit doesn't come forth. It dies on the branches. The proper and the right nourishment is not distributed throughout the branches of the tree. When a man began to mature because he is nurtured by a great love of Torah. And same thing with the Iman, the bath of Desayon. The daughters of Jalo, because they have the tranquility of Yah, his shalom and his peace. We are a ruckus people. We don't like it, but it's the truth. But we greet you all. <clears throat> Join us, whatever the way of the modem or the process. You're hearing this teaching today, whether it is repeated, ill regardless to how this truth shall pierce your hearts. I ask you to take heed. And to hear. And so today, Yah's will, his pleasure, it will certainly be my pleasure. If he allows me to teach and to speak like a Tolmi, a Tolmi, a messenger 
there has an understanding of Torah that he can speak as a scholar. That he has scholarship. And it has come by this relentless desire and passion. Not to understand the things that we perceive are grand. And everything that Yah says is grand. But he understands the nuances of the small material that makes and builds the power of the kingdom riches of Yah. He has a fellowship by the power of the Ruach with the Abba. And his testimony speaks of the evidence of Yahshua HaMashiach, a Torah that is Chayil. It is alive. It has the power to fight. There's strength. There's a beauty to the words that come forth. And that he speaks from that perch. From that simple ground of wisdom. And then his words will have integrity. Whether it is to the heart of the wicked man or either the Sadiq man. I'm convinced to teach this today because of the past week I was talking to our precious Ach Al Zakhin there in Baltimore, Zakhin Johnson. We began to discuss one thing the kingdom. Or the Melku, the Melchuts, or the Melcha. And so there was a question that we bounced off of our simplicity of wisdom for an answer. And I said to him, my Zachain, it is amazing because. That is a message that I had compiled some time ago that I wanted to teach. So this is not my preference of teaching today, but I want to teach it. Because we have this misconstrued concept of the Melchuts, the kingdom. What does a kingdom consist of? There must be the power of sovereignty. A rule, a system that governs a government that governs every aspect of one's life. It cannot be a mandate that we go and look at and understand the dynamics of it. It must be alive. It must be real. It must be sure. We must understand that. So this teaching today is simply the kingdom. Or Melchut Ha, the kingdom of Almighty Yah in Yahshua. Simply the kingdom. Now I know as a young man you will hear those differentiate between the kingdom of Yah and the kingdom of Hashem Ha'an. It is one kingdom. There is no two. It is one kingdom. And for us to understand the dynamics of that as men are looking for a kingdom in the visual of their peripheral is not so. His kingdom shall rule. But there's a profound manner in how it shall rule. And in order to understand this we must search out the dynamics of the precepts of Yah's kingdom. We must enrich our understanding to understand what Torah says about the kingdom. And I want to begin with the very exhortation, the very words of Ara Hamashiach in the book of Lucas. I want you all to carefully examine the text today. You jot them down and then you go and refresh 
you suffer again. And then you listen to the teaching again and again and again. And only then will you get clarity of what is being said today. We are microwave YouTube, Walmart's CVS generation. We're always looking for the quick remedy. But it doesn't work that way. In order for man to build a strong dwelling place, he cannot build that overnight. In order for man to get down to the bedrock of the foundation, he must dig. In order for you to understand the things that deter you and cause you to walk in error, you must dig down into the depths of the sadistic mind that you have shapen and formed by retaining that which is vile, evil, and corrupt. You must get down to the bedrock of that. And because we don't want to get down to the bedrock of it, you cannot build a complete bed. You cannot build a house. You can't build it upon sand and loose gravel. You must have a strong footing. The foundation must be poured right. And there is no other foundation to build upon but the power and revelation of Torah. Yoshua sure is that living Torah. I want to begin here in the book of Lucas chapter 17. And I want to proceed to verse 20. Yoshua sure speaks of the dynamics and the power of this kingdom or the revelation of whom he is. That's why the intellectual minds could not understand or receive the revelation that he spoke. Because it wasn't given unto all men. So he speaks of the dynamic of the kingdom and the power of what it consists of. And he begins here in verse 20. And when those that were the pushim, the scribes, the Pharisees, when this particular one, it tells us that he demanded, he amah, he uttered from the depths of his bosom. He demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of Almighty Yashut Chaya, when it should exist. When it should present itself, when it should come, when it shall enter in, that is the Chaya. I am that I am. So when he demanded of the Pharisees, uh, of the Pushim, Yahshua demanded of them, uh, when the kingdom of Yah should come, uh, Yahshua answered them uh, and said, he said, the kingdom, the Melchuts, he said, comes not, it doesn't bow, it doesn't enter in by observation, by you looking for it, by you shema, by you observing and waiting for that kingdom. He said, it doesn't come that way. Then how does it come? What is the revelation of that kingdom? He says, uh, Neither shall they say, look, behold, you come here, see the kingdom. He says the kingdom of Yah is within you. What was he implying? What was he saying? We will read that, but we will get no clarity of it. There will be no definitive of that because we miss one of the most important composition of his speak. One of the most vital things that he says. We will not search the Torah to see what he was implying. We don't have the depth of intrigue as a nation of people to seek out the answer. He said it's not coming by observation. 
You're not going to say, lo, the kingdom is here, or here is the power of the kingdom of Yah. He says, but I say to you that the kingdom of Yah is within you. And for us to understand the depths of that, I want to search out within. I want to search out what's within. And we shall proceed on that journey. But before we began there, there is something that is vitally important that we must understand. And the Nobi Yeshaya, Isaiah, he speaks so profoundly in the 63rd chapter and verse 10. Within is the kingdom. I want us to hear this clearly and plainly. Yeshaya, Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 10. He speaks of his people, his nation, because Yah is kind toward us. He is consistent in his ways, he is faithful, and he shows his deep compassion upon his people. That doesn't make us love him. It doesn't cause us to embrace him. But he allows breath to rise from your loins this day. We did not show the appreciation of his great kindness. And his great love toward us. And so the messenger proclaimed. By the power of the instructions of Yah. Because he had a living Torah within. He says. But they. Who? We are the dead. They. But they, we are people that's mara. We rebel. We are very contentious people. We have contention between one another. And we rebel against sound instructions. He said, but this people, they, they rebel. And Yah says, they vexed. My ruach hachodesh. My life. And the witness of me, they vex it. They torment. They were contentious against the leading and the guiding uh, of Yas Ruach. A word that is alive. A word that sustains us. A word that we can eat. It is a bread that produces life. It is the water that flows from the rock of Gibraltar. It is the rock that you speak to and the, and the living water shall flow. He said, my people, they are mara, they are contentious, they are rebellious. They have this refractory spirit. They are not at ease with one another and they are certainly not at shalom with me. So we grieve the ruach of Yah. Yah says, therefore Yah was turned, therefore Yah was turned uh, to be their Oyeb. Because we grieve the Ruach, because we are contentious, uh, then Yah was turned. He showed not to be their friend, but to be their Oyeb, a nation that battles against another nation to destroy. He turned to be their enemy. And not only that, and he fought, he fought, he laham, not for them, but he fought against them. He fought against them. He fought, he laham. The battle of their mind was against him. The battle of the Torah was against them. The battle of Sadiq, the character of Yah was against them. And he fought against them. Then... Then, then, at that moment, Yahweh, the mighty one, our Abba, he there was a zigrond in his mind, he remembered. That's why the mind must be stirred up constantly, the pure mind, to remember. It says, then Yah, he remembered the days of old. The days of antiquity, 
The days before these ones ever knew him. The days of our forefather, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob. He remembered those days, not that they were lost unto him. He brought the essence of those days in his speech unto the Nobi because Yeshua was not alive in those days. He remembered the days of old. He remembered Moshe and his people, his arm, that which is beloved of him, his nation. Saying, where is he? They asked Moshe that. Where is he that brought them out of the sea? With the shepherd, uh, with the leader of his flock. Where is he that brought them out? The messenger that guided them. By the Amah, the speech, the utterance of Yah's heart. As he spoke to this man, as he guided him. And yet they grieved the Ruach HaKodash. The Ruach is just not some new thing, as many would believe. No man has ever been led by Yah without the power of the Ruach HaKodash. Yeah. We must have the Ruach. And so sin or the kingdom of darkness, uh, it is an enemy of the kingdom of Yah. And so there is always these covert activities in our minds. Uh, you know they're covert. Because their mind concepts and thoughts and speech imagination uh, that is continuously battling uh, to overthrow that which is sadiq, uh, which is righteous. Uh, you know it's right to do and you do it not. It is one of the most vilest of sins. Uh, I know it's right to embrace my alka and to love him. And if I don't do it, uh, it's sin. Yeah. Makes no difference how you feel. Make no difference how many times they're sinned against you. Seven times seventy. I shall, my friend, I want to teach like a scholar, all right, like a tell me. Where is this one that brought us out? Who gave us one to lead us? Yoshua says the kingdom of Yah is within. He put the power of his kingdom, not only in Moshe, but in that people. We grieve the Ruach. Listen to what Yah says. Where is he that put Nathan, that put his Ruach HaKodesh, Herep, within? Did not Yoshua says that... Uh, the kingdom of Almighty Yah is within in Lucas, in the book of Luke, 17:21. This is not some new phenomenon, the kingdom power of Yisrael. And what even Yerushalayim and what Yisrael represented, it represented a kingdom people uh, that had a government, a Mishra, that was the principles of Yah's mind. So he put his Ruach in Moshe. He bestowed his ruach. He did not say around him, but within. Kerep, in the center, in the centrality of his being, it was the substance that governed him. It was the power of life that governed him. It was the breath of his life and the breath of his mind. Can I go back to Lucas again and read that? Hold that in Yeshaya. It says in Lucas 17, 21, Neither shall they say, See here, or lo, look yonder ways. Yahshua says, Only behold, pay attention. He identifies the Melkut. He said, The kingdom of Yah is within you. He said, It is within you. I'm here to shine the light of that kingdom that you may know the power of that kingdom 
that you have been translated into by the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. If there is a revelation of Yahshua, you can never be translated into the kingdom. For the power of that kingdom uh, is within. It is the kingdom of Hashemiah because it has come down from beyond the heavens uh, that we see. It has come down from beyond uh, all of the barringers of the heavens. Uh, nothing could stop it. Nothing could impede it. Uh, so he has brought down the lights of the heavens. When you look up into the heavens, you look at what the lights. You look up into the heavens for the lights. And he has brought down the light, the ma'or, the power to rejoice uh, in his wisdom. Uh, he has brought down the ma'or of understanding uh, like a child when they understand a thing. They rejoice. It's important. Remember that word, right? Writing. Ha. Da. In stride. His kingdom, the ma'o or the rejoicing of light that has come, cause our faces to shine. Not like this damn sick generation. Your face doesn't shine, you're sick. I shall. You're sick. When the great light of his achava, you fear no man. You fear no door of Tizayon. Your love for one is the same as the love for the other one. My love for this Ahot is the same for that Ahot and that Ahot. You cannot compartmentalize love, put it in certain compartments. I love my son more than I love the... No, that's false. It is the same love. My same love that makes me honor her will make me honor you. The same love that makes me respect her will make me respect you. The same love that make me go but not beyond the boundaries of friendship and love uh, will do the same thing for you. This is a stupid generation. The kingdom is within us. It is kereb. It is in the midst of our mind. It is within the midst of our center of emotion, wisdom, and knowledge of all matters. That's what Yeshua said. And then the Novi speaks so profoundly as he gives us concept of this Yeshaya. In the midst of that verse, he says, where is he? Where is the Abba? Where is the mighty one? Yeshaya 63, 11, Isaiah. Where is he that put his Ruach HaKodash within? Within the inner parts. In the centrality, when the power of the kingdom ruler, everything that you think and you do, uh, it emanates from the kingdom rule and the kingdom government. Uh, what kingdom rules in us? Hallelujah. Are our thoughts dark? Or our ways, ways that perpetuate this dark inner thought and this darkness of our minds? We're not going to get by Yisrael. Your actions are they dark and devious uh, and full of deceit and hatred. Uh, you know that's not the inherent characteristics of the kingdom of Yah. Yeah. Your thoughts is not one of, your thought is not one of love and great affection toward Yisrael. Yeah, you know the kingdom is not in you. Yeah. You know the kingdom is not in you. We have opportunity to write by all men, especially Yisrael, if there's not a preference of great favor for Yisrael, you know the kingdom is not in you. It's not there. He used one to bring them out, did he not? He was their melech. He was the messenger whereby Yah had taken the coals of fire of his altar and placed them in his belly. I'm going to teach on that name. Don't worry. I got something profound to teach next week. And I may just come in and start teaching. No singing. We need to learn how to sit before Yah. Yeah. You can sit in some of the most frivolous conversations that produce nothing after you leave. 
cause you to be more anti, to hate Yah. When it comes to Yah, we have no patience. Well, I have the power, the strength to endure, and I can stand here. So if your hips get a little tight, stand up. Hallelujah. The kingdom, the Melku, the Melech had the government of his sovereign power ruling in us. It is within. How can this be? How was this position? Well, Yeremiah gives us great insight right here. I want to emphasize that one word for a moment. Within. Within. It has a position that is not without. The children of the kingdom of Hashatan, these are the children without or outside the kingdom. Are they not? And the children of light, there is something that is within. And when the light or the ma'or, I use not or, but the ma'or, that which shines upon it and calls it to rejoice, Yahshua is the or, he is the light, he is the light of Yah, he is the ma'or. And when the light shone upon that which was within, then those that were the sugula, the people of Yah, the peculiar people, the great possession of his treasures, they rejoice. And if we don't have this within, and the power of the testimony of Yahshua is expressed to us, uh, and we don't rejoice in that because you're outside of the kingdom. The kingdom power is not within. You have no depths of the kingdom power. We have this transgressive attitude. And we look dead. We look wicked. I want to look like I'm alive. I don't want to get up and teach us that I look like a dead man. I want you to know that I believe this. Because I will not spend hours and hours and hours. I'm not boasting my son. I spend that kind of time. I manage my time. I get up in the morning so I can't get in the book. I don't like sleeping and slumbering. I like to get up in the morning. I don't like lying in the bed. I know when my body is refreshed. Anything beyond that, there is no liveliness in you. And so when it's time to get up, I get up. I don't care if it's 4 a.m., 4.35. And if I sleep to 7, I get up. Within. Within. Hallelujah. Well, let me examine what Yah has put within. Yeremiah 31, 32, 31, 33. The Nobi speaks unto the house of Yisra'ya by the mandate, the sava, the command of the authority of Yah. He says here in Jeremiah chapter 31, 33. We want to look for that word, keret, within, the inward parts. Yah says, this shall be the berith, my legion, my covenant, my alliance, my fellowship, this shall be the covenant. And he, in that berith or the Brit, he said, this is my, a covenant is a pledge. It's like a man and a wife uh, when they marry. There is a pledge. Not these lies that these liars that call themselves Hebrews, uh, that are taking advantage to satisfy their own lusts, their fornication, taking a piece of paper and these false men uh, that call themselves Kohim uh, and marrying them just write a piece of paper, then why do you sure go to the marriage feast? Uh, I'm going to write and teach on that, don't worry. And not these lies that they are promoting for man uh, to have him four or five concubines, uh, just silly whores uh, of what they are. They are so insecure, they're not secure with their Abba. They don't trust Yah, and they certainly are not wise because when a man finds that, uh, he needs no other gem. I shall, my friend, for our strength. She is the greatest of gems. So they're not wise. 
So they have no confidence in the beauty of their ability because they have no beauty. And so they let this creep of a, a beast say we're married. No, you're just simply shacking uh, like dogs. Dogs do that. And they are not married. The lion has a harem of lioness. Well, why can't we do that? Because the lion would take his daughter. Will you take your daughter, you beast of a dog? The male dog will produce a litter and he'll produce litters by his babies. These women are stupid. Well, he against us. No, I'm for you. You seek out y'all. He will not withhold no tough thing from them that walk upright. These men trying to find and look. My young son, you just keep your heart on Yah. You don't have to look for nothing. Trying to figure out. Lusting like damn dogs. It's not of Yah. You will never have a wife. You're not a damn husband. I didn't even intend to use those words today. But that's all right. You're a lustful freak. When the man walks upright, he withhold nothing. You walk upright, daughter, he'll send you an ish. And a man has physicality, he has strength. He looks like a man. He is not downtrodden. He looks like a man. I look like a man. You understand? When I go places, if someone look at me, that doesn't mean that that young woman desired me. There are people that look because they're inspired. Because they like the way he looked. They see an old man, boy, he, he looks nice to be old. That doesn't inspire me to pursue. It's silly. That's not even childhood schoolboy stuff. I'm a man. You understand. I am a man. Yeremiah 31, 33. This shall be the berith, my allegiance, my alliance with you. He said that I will make, I will form, I will boza, boza, I will form. When that word boza, it is a word that only deals with the creative power of Yah. You hear that? I will get into the depth of that. I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, all right? Let me move on. He said, I will make with Beit Yisrael. He's talking about those days when this light of revelation is revealed. Uh, he said, after those days... After those days, when the great offering that is offered up on Calvary, he said, after those days, Yah says, I will not thun, I will put. Not only will he put, he said, I will utter, I will speak. I will utter, I will speak, I will put my Torah in their get up, in their inward, in their inward, in the within, within, within. You don't have to go and look at the writings of Torah. He says, I'm going to put. For the kingdom of Yah is within. It is Kerebba. It is Kerebba. It is Kerebba. He said, I will not that I will put, I will put my Torah. So if the kingdom of is within, we must examine what Yah has put within. We must see the things that are within. We must understand the depths of the things that are within. So we must examine the Torah and see what is within a Sadiq man. And we get no comprehension of that. What Yahshua said is a flat out lie. The kingdom. He is truth. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad he still gives me energy and strength. I'm alive. I can search the book. I'm not seeking my own. I'm not seeking no pleasures for me. I'm not seeking money. I'm not seeking riches. I'm not seeking fine homes. I want to know the truth. And my heart and my affection is upon that. He says, I'm going to put Kerem within my truth, my Torah. Within. Hallelujah. He said, I will put my Torah in their inward parts. He said, and I will have 
stop. I will write. I will prescribe. Listen, I will engrave. And when something is engraved, I don't care what the wear and tear is, uh, it's still there. I don't care how the sand beat upon what they call Mount Rushmore. Those faces are still there. When you engrave it in the tombstones, uh, they are still there. Ox Simeon and I, we were at this graveyard. It was a confederate graveyard. And I stood there and we were, I read the tombstones. Uh, John Smith died in 1830. Mary Lou Smith died in 1810. And the visibility of those same stones, the engraving of those stones, the letters were as legible now as they were then. I don't care what darkness have come through that area. I don't care how the rains have beat against that stone. Yahshua is the rock. He is the stone. He is the foundation of the kingdom of God. It's still there. So when Yah says, I'm going to hatab, I'm going to engrave that. Uh, that even the layers of sin and corruption, uh, then he remembered Moshe. Uh, he remembered uh, the Zikron was brought back uh, to his mind. Uh, how he led them. And how he put within Moshe his ruach. And although when he smote that stone as we have smote Yahshua, he said, just speak. And the waters flowed. That living water flowed. He said, I will put within. I will write. I will hot up. I will inscribe it. Where, ya? He said, I will write it in their living, in their hearts, in your life, in your heart. He says, and that is a purpose because uh, this is my barith. He said, I will be your Abba. I will show you my tender kindness. I will take care of you. I will gather you under the wings of my comfort as a hen gather her chicks. He said, I will be your Abba. And did he take possessive of this? He said, and you shall. Not that you might. There's a possibility. Use a, an affirmation. He confirms, and you shall. He uses a verb that implies it shall be. It is as it is commanded. Do you understand that shall is implying that it is as it is spoken. He said, and you shall be my nation, my people, my am, my elect, my. I will put something in the inward parts. I will put the dynamics of my kingdom and the rule of the power of my kingdom. It has come from above. It has come from above, Yisrael. Within. He said, it shall be the Yavek in the center, in the heart, within. And so when you want to go shopping, you go to the kingdom. When you want to buy, you go to the kingdom and buy truth. You don't sell it. When you won't choose, you go to the kingdom. You're in the kingdom uh, and you shod your feet with the preparation of the message of Shalom. When you feel a little weak in your chest, you go and you buy the breastplate of Sadiq. When you're feeling down in your head, then you put on the assurance of the helmet of Torah. That's what you do. Uh. When your hands feel weak and feeble, you lift up the sword, the word of Yah of righteousness. That's what you do. Uh. You cannot have a kingdom without defending it. Uh, and you need the armament to defend this kingdom. Uh, when the enemy encroach upon you to try to dismantle uh, the construct of, this, uh, of the kingdom, then you pick up those things uh, that is needed to destroy the powers of hell. Uh, that's how you do it. You don't get placed in your emotions and your immaturity. Uh, you rely upon the proven factors uh, and the proven mythology, which is in Torah. Yah's words never fail. Uh, none whatsoever. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we began to solidify the power of this kingdom within us, uh, for the kingdom is within. Uh, there was a prophet that speaks of the excellence uh, and the power that his name is Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 12. One verse I want to read. Uh, it shows the power of his kingdom within our bosom. Zechariah. Chapter 12, verse 1. 
It talks about the Messiah of the great Lord, the burden. Well, one of the greatest utterance of the kingdom is Yahshua. He is the kingdom power of Yah. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden, it is light. He said, the Messiah of the kingdom, it is not uh, one that will break your back or, or destroy the will and the passion uh, to please Yah. It is the burden of sin that weighs us down. It is the burden of my own or feed my iniquitous wicked ways. You know they're wrong and you don't try to correct your ways. There's something sick in our minds, Yisrael. Yeah. He said the burden of the word of Almighty Yahweh for Yisrael. It was a load. It was a burden for Yah to speak to us. It is still a burden today for him to speak to us. He talks about the Messiah, the burden, the great Lord, uh, of the word of Yah for Yisra'ya. We make his word heavy. We make his word difficult. Saying, this is what Yah says, uh, he is the one that stretched forth the Shemaiah in the heavens. At times I look at the heavens in the early of the mornings and the noon of the day uh, and the lateness of the evenings. Uh, you can't even see the dimension and the depths of it. But it's a beautiful thing to me. It makes me rejoice and sing and get happy. This is what our Abba has done. A covenant with us. He wants to remind us that he is the one that stretched out the Hashemayim. He said, I want to let you know that I laid the foundations and the fountains of the earth. Of the, of the Erech, the Ola. Every pillar, I put them in place. And every, there are seven pillars that, uh, that the whole creation of Yah stands upon. And that's a fact. That's a fact. He said, I want you to know that I, I, yes, sir, I formed it. Yah says, uh, and form. I was the one that formed. He said, I was the one that formed the Ruach command within him. It is within Yisrael. He said, I'm the one that caused the breath of the life of my power to be formed, to be yatsah, to be fashioned. Whereby this empty, weak body, it could inhabit. That's why the power of that ruach within Yahshua, it was poured out in him without measure. Yah says, I form man, and I know he can't take it all. I know he can't bear it. He said, but I'm the one that, yes, sir, I form the Ruach, the life within man. I form the kingdom within man. I put the kingdom principles within man. The kingdom of Yah, Yahshua said, is within. It's not by the observation of Torah and you try to find out the elements of the kingdom. It is something that is more dynamic than that. One said, come here, I got the knowledge of the kingdom of Yah. Don't go. I'm the one that he has uh, formed. He didn't form it outside of man. He put his kingdom riches in him. That's why Yahshua spoke in parables. It is meant for you that are in the kingdom to know. And those that are without, I don't intend for them to know. He formed the breath. The ruach. Yah is ruach. There is no other life. There is no other life of any spirit. Yah gives life to Tava. He gives life to Evel. He gives life to Hashatan. Just like the life of his Torah is within us. He created the Tav and he also created the evil. That's what Yah did, Yisrael. He commands us to choose that which our heart leads us. His heart, Yahshua, leads us to the kingdom store. We've got to go in the store of truth and buy truth and don't sell it. we got to buy truth. we got to buy understanding. And wisdom, we can't sell that. we got to frequent the store of Yah all day long. We can go to the store every single day and do the same thing. Nothing. Look at the same thing. And yet we can't go to the storehouse. Is not this book the storehouse of Yah? Isn't not this where everything is stored for life? And yet we can't pick that book up and buy nothing out of that storehouse that impresses us. 
But Walmart would impress us and the dollar store and the, and the flea market will impress us. We can go buy the sweetness of the stores, but we will not buy the delicacies of the storehouse of Yah. I don't care if you don't love me. I don't want your love no way. Don't love me. I don't, we don't need your gifts. You brought you my hood, Sylvia, there in Reddit in California. There's blessings rest upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful old hood there. And she'll write and say, I don't want to really bet you down with so many questions, but that's all right. There are those I won't answer their questions. Man called me the other day. He was telling me about his leader there in Chicago. I want to know how you, he must. I said, I'm not telling you one thing. You think you're spiritual, you're led by the Ru'ak, and I hope he's listening. And he does listen. You said you're led by the Ru'ak, HaChodash. How do you even know how to imas? I said, no, what you do, you save your money, then you go to your leader and let, I said, I will not imas you. Because I would not allow you to challenge me. How old are you? I'm 30. I would have sons and daughters older than him. You think I'm going to let you be, let you quiz me? You will not do that. I was immersing folks before he was born. You think I'm going to allow him to do me like that? You can. I will not. I said, I'm not going to answer it. I do it right. Whatever it costs you to get to get him as, uh, he said, but I'm afraid. I said, you got to live. Don't worry about it. Now, see, he received that. But he had no confidence that I knew how. Now, I'm not going to toy with this wicked generation. You can. You can toy with it. This is a ruthless generation. And I'm not going to toy with it. I'm not going to appease it. You all stretch out the heavens, you look up and see that that's enough. Uh, he's the one that formed the Ruach within us, Yisrael. He is the one that formed uh, the administration of the Ruach. Uh, he is the one that, yes, uh, he is the one that caused the administration of his life to operate within us. The kingdom of Yah is within. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's why I love David. He speaks. Did he have enemies, David? He had enemies, didn't he? And sometimes his heart failed him. And sometimes he was taken aback. He was weak. But he had something in the, within. He had that kingdom power. How do I know? I would have began here then in Tehillim. In Psalms. In Psalms. Chapter 40. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 1. Verse 8. May I begin? This is this first person, Yoshua, as he speaks to the loins of David. He had the testimony of Yoshua in him. For the volume of the book it speaks of, Yoshua, you can't denounce Torah, the Shabbat and all that and say you have the volume of Yoshua. That's foolishness. Yah has put that in the inward parts to preserve it. Uh, so when we hear the witness of this living testimony, it costs the mouth or the light of rejoicing to come forth. Yeah. Look what you're sure the mouth of David says. Uh, David said, I delight to do your rason uh, or your will, uh, your great pleasure, your great delight. Uh, we should delight to do the will of Yah. We should delight. We should have great shalom. We should have tranquility. We should have uh, great excitement. We get excited over a damn ham biscuit. And a fat back, crispy, uh, fat back biscuit. We get excited over catfish. Yet the riches of his Torah, we don't get excited. Why? Because what's in us? That he said... For a delight to do your will was accepted before you. He says, oh yeah, almighty oh, Yahweh. He calls him my Abba. He says, yes, 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 king, king, yes, 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 yes. your, yes. your. 
Torah is within me. He said, your Torah is within my lap. For the kingdom of Yah is within. He said, for your Torah is within me. That's what he said. He said, delight. A delight. He said, no candy store has this. The greatest of the creations of man's corruption. Nothing when I go into the store of Yah. What store? When I go into the center of his will, which is in my heart, which I find in the revelation of Torah. The light of Yahshua shine, the testimony, the Eduth of Yah shines so greatly. I delight to do your will. Why? Because your Torah is within me. For the kingdom of Yah is within. You have no power of the living Torah. You have no kingdom power. That's why you're saying, let's go there. Let's listen to him. Let's go yonder there, as the old folks would say. For the kingdom, the Melkut, is within. It is within. It comes not by observation. He's a delight. To do your rosun, your great pleasure. The things that make your heart happy. The things that your ordinance and your piku, your statues, your wisdom speaks. It makes my heart fat. You've elected me to do that. He said, why? Because your Torah, the wisdom of your counsel, that's what Torah is. It is your diction to guide us through the perilous sea of death and destruction in this earth. Because the power of sin has been loose. You got one kingdom of darkness, you got the kingdom of Sadiq. And there must be a righteous kingdom in us to overcome. Come on, Yisra'ya. The manifestation of, uh, of renewed Yerushalayim, uh, it, it represents the fullness of the kingdom identity in us, Yisra'ya. That's what Yisra'ya represented. That's what uh, Yisra'ya, the land of Israel, it represented that. You cannot bring the abominations inside of the gate of Yah on the Shabbat. You, you couldn't do that. You cannot bring the burdens into the city of Yerushalayim on the Shabbat. That's why the more dim why we, we should go in within the walls of the gates of Yerushalayim. That's where they kept the Moat. That they will not be interfered with the things outside of that. We forgot the simple words. You hear someone say something, you miss that one word, and you lose the whole dimension of what they say. Well, oh, he said that. She said that to me. No, that's not what she said. Uh, that's why I constantly repeat myself. No, listen to what I said. This is what I said. You missed that word. I was talking to my Ach Mikaya. I said, you know, Mikaya, Evangelist Hartsfield, I remember one day on his knees, he just said, read that. Explain it. Well, I thought I had a little something. When I explained, he said, you're wrong. Read it again. Well, then I was intimidated then. I was a young, young lad. So I was very cautious. That's the way I explained it the next time. He said, you're still wrong. Read it again. Well, the third time I read it, I shut my mouth. We should be slow to speak and quick to hear. Quick to hear and slow to speak. So I shut my mouth. Then by his wisdom, he says to me, read it. And I want you to look at this word right here. When I looked at that word of my, or the wisdom of that, my head, uh, then he, he explained it. Uh, and it was the identical words of my mind. They were identical. He taught me a valuable lesson that day. Learn how to shut. Although you may know. Uh, don't try to take the high seat. Uh, when, the, when, the, when the king comes in, uh, he would say, oh, my servant, uh, you, you shouldn't be sitting there. Come on up here. Take the high seat. Uh, because he may come and say, no, 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 you don't even have the wisdom. I look at you. Look at your face. Look how you look. You're not even dressed proper. Your garment is wrong. Now. You look silly, man. Get out. I don't want people looking at you. Sit out over there. You take the low road. They always think you got something trying to take the high road. Huh? And by the simplest of terminology, we miss it. He said, your Torah is within me. Your Torah, your truth. The love of your Torah, he says, is within. He did not say without, within. Your sure said the kingdom of Yah is within. Everything that he speaks 
Everything he is, everything he was, everything now he is, uh, it must be in compliance uh, with Torah, with the wisdom of the prophets uh, and the messengers of Yah. No different message. It's the same. He says, with him I live. Yahshua says, as David, he says, I have uh, boza, his boza, I have declared it, I have preached, I have declared your truth. He said, I have declared I've spoken your righteousness, your great Sadiq. He calls it the great Uchel, or the great congregation. He says, I want you to know, Lord, I will not, I will not be impeded. I will not refrain my lips, O oh Yah. He says, I know that you know, you Yada, my Sadiq, my righteousness. Look what Davi said in verse 10. He says, I have not hid your Sadiq within my life. You see where his righteousness, the Torah, Psalms 119, verse 142. For your, let me find that. Hallelujah. You stay right there. I want to read this. Those charlatans and false sayers that think they know and they really don't know. Did not David says in 108, I mean the verse that I just read. Did he not say unto Yah, he says in verse 10, I have not hid your sadiq, your righteousness. Does it say that? Well then let me examine Psalms 119 verse 142. He says your righteousness, is it the same word? Is it the same word? He says, your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. He says, and your law, your Torah, it is imat, it is truth. That's what he said. He said, I have not hidden. I have not. That's why he says, I have boza. I have bazarak. I have taught. I have proclaimed. That's what Yahshua came to do. He came to teach the power of the kingdom within the darkness of our sins and our corruption have obscured and hidden what Yah has put there. You're going to pay a, you're going to pay a price, Yisrael. You're not going to get by. You're not getting by. Your damn tears are not going to change anything. He's weary of our repenting. So his Righteousness is everlasting. The righteousness of truth, Torah, it is everlasting. It is ulam, ulam, ulam viyat. It doesn't break, nothing breaks it, nothing causes that to, to be broken. He has an everlasting righteousness. His Torah is the only truth. His Torah. I have not, yeah. Hid your Torah, your Sadiq within my heart. He said, I have declared your Omen, your faithfulness. He said, not only that, but your deliverance. He said, I have not concealed. Do we conceal that? Oh, I love it. He said, did he not say conceal? I have not concealed. To conceal is to hide, isn't it? It is to obscure. It is not to allow the fruitfulness of that to flow. He says, I have not concealed what? Your love kindness. See, within the kingdom is love kindness. He says, and your Torah, your truth. I have not re concealed that from the great congregation. He said, I'm not hid that. I have not concealed it. He said, it's within me. Isn't that where he's speaking from? The words, Oma, Oma, it means to utter from the depths of the heart. That's what the word Oma, Amma means. Amma, A W M A, Amma. It is to speak the utterance from the heart. And so when you say, see the word, and Yah says, thus saith Yah, it is Amma. It is that he's speaking from his heart. So this is Yahshua speaking, David speaking, uh, in the first person of Yahshua. He said, did Yahshua have the Torah of Yah from us? Is truth. He did not have the love kindness. He said, I've not concealed it. I've not shown this one love and not shown this one love. That's wickedness. It's because we don't have the power of the kingdom in us, Yisrael. Yeah? He said, I've not concealed it. I've not hid it. 
and you say you love, you are a hypocrite. Shut your mouth, woman. Man, sit down. You're cold, you're indifferent, you're nasty. I'll get into it, my friend. It's one thing about love, it's a fragrance. That words I don't like. I don't like the word save all because I, as I've searched the Torah, I have, I, Yahweh's will, I want to put the booklet out. It's a nice book. I've searched the book from cover to cover. I've examined words to find out the hidden words that are associated with the gods. I'm going to pull it up today. Maybe just have the Achim to print it. You'd be surprised what words are hidden there. And you calling on those spirits. That's why I don't use those words. I don't use them. I don't use the word save or. I'd rather say his fragrance. It's a sweet smelling fra fra fragrance. It has life and death and the power of the tongue, isn't it? Yeah. So we have to be careful. We have to be retrained. Yes. We have to be retaught. What's wrong with that? Hallelujah. What's wrong with having a teacher to teach us? Hallelujah. And we have abandoned those kinds of words. Yes. I don't like the, the word hope because I understand what it means. I understand that there's a progressive time that we overcome that. Uh, the things that we ought not say out of our mouth. I don't like the word mercy because I understand. It's his love, kindness, his hasita, his noham. I know we're ignorant because I'm ignorant. And if I'm ignorant, I expect you to be ignorant. What's wrong with that? That's why there must be a diligent search. And I've done the work to believe me. Why? To make it easy for you. So it won't be no burden for you. All I ask you to do is just read it and examine it. You can't prove me wrong with it now, okay? Hallelujah. I have not concealed your love, kindness, and your truth. What is truth? Did not, David says here in 142, uh, to Helium 19, 142, uh, he, says, uh, he says, and thy law is the truth. So if I see truth, I know I'm talking about the Torah. I have not hidden your truth from the congregation uh, of your elect. I'm not hiding anything from you today. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not hiding anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there's not a burden on you. The word of Yah is not a burden to you. The only thing you got to do is eat it. Hallelujah. And re-examine it and listen some more. Yeah. And then you can carry on the responsibility that you're supposed to carry on. Hallelujah. Then you can delight in what you've read and studied in the Torah. You don't have to be arrogant. You know I read. I was reading that yesterday. You didn't understand what you were reading. It means nothing what you read. Reading produced nothing. Shaul told Timothy to to study with an in depth, to study that one thing and meditate day and night and ponder it. Let it resonate from your mind. Let it shine upon your face when you're awakened. Let it be the comfort when you go to bed. That's not the mind of Yisrael. She's thinking about getting a man to lay with her. He wants a woman. He is not. His mind is not on you. That's why a lot of people don't like me. I love me. I love me a lot. I correct me a lot. My mind's on everything but in the kingdom. In the kingdom. In the kingdom. In the kingdom. I say, I say, other day I said, I was laying up in the bed. It was late at night. Well, to me it was 10, 11, but I was so tired and sleepy. And I had my, I'm looking at this one thing in Torah. And I found myself, I mean, I was, I was going into those kind of ream, deep sleep. But all of a sudden I would wake up, and there it was. That same word reverberated continuously. And then I would fall out again, but yet, that, that's it right there. I see it. And then I fall out again, I wake up and I see it. I'm trying to stay awake, but I could not. And all of a sudden, that's what comforted me in my sleep that night. Because y'all kept it in my mind. So I could wake up that morning, couldn't wait to get to the book or refresh myself. I don't wake up sick in the morning. It's almost like a man eating a stick and he wake up in the morning, he got this sick feeling. You know what I'm talking about. I can't get enough of this. And so what a wise man, when he labors, you see that on his countenance. You see a beauty about that man like no other man. And we just don't find that beauty among Yisrael. You see that upon the Imma, the, the daughters of Tizayon. You see a great, excellent a beauty. The, 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 the Tifra of Yah. The Yafef. It is the beauty that shines from their countenance. We see this ugliness, this hideous look. 
You can't change it. You got to get something in you to change that. You try all the time because you don't get it in you. We got to get this kingdom truth in us. And that's why you never change it. You will never do anything. I don't care what it is. I love us all. I will never lose weight until I get it within me. And once I get it within my heart, it will come off. If I don't do it, I can procrastinate and pretend nothing is going to happen. I will always make excuses, which I do. Which I do. Which I do. You got to get it with that. That's why we make excuses for you. You cannot make no excuses in this kingdom. It's within. It's within. It is the Yavikra. It is in the centrality of our being. It is the central administrator of all things that pertain unto the most high. Hallelujah. David says here in uh, Psalms 51 verse 10, he tells you, he says, I want you to bara, create. Only y'all can create. I'm so glad. He says, bara. He says, create in me. I want you to fashion within me. And the word bara always deals with Yah. His power to create out of nothing. We were nothing. Before you were formed in your mother, you were nothing. Before the, before the sperm of your father, you were nothing. He created nothing, life out of that. He says, create in me, Yah. He says, create in me, O oh, Yah, a clean, a taho, clean heart. And he says, Yah, I want you to renew the right. I want you to renew. I want you to renew the right ruach. I want you to renew that which you have formed for me in the beginning. Where is the ruach? He says, within. Renew the refreshing of the kingdom within me. Renew the delight of the kingdom riches within me. How do you, that takes place? By meditating day and night. By meditating. You can't meditate on the things of the world and think that you're going to be satisfied with Yah. You can't meditate on the sensual things of your flesh and think you're going to have great victory. You know, it's not going to be Yisrael Yah. Create in me a clean heart and renew. He says, I want you to hadash. I mean, hadash. I want you to create in me a new and renew a right. Or renew the right ruaka within me. I want you to harab. It is within me. Did he not say that? It's within. For the kingdom of Yah is within. For the kingdom of Yah is within. We must constantly hear. The Ruach HaKodash will not come and speak of a Pacific of whom he is. For he is the mind of Yah. But he will speak of those things which he has already Shema heard and guard against. And the Ruach, the kingdom, is set to guard against any encroaching kingdom. That's why it must be within us. There must be a law in us. There must be a kingdom rule. There must be the armament of battle against your Oyeb, your enemy. It must be within Yisrael. It must be within. It doesn't come by observation. It doesn't come to, you say, oh, I see the kingdom. You see nothing. Yeah. And we see the renewed Yerushalayim. It's going to represent everything that is within. It's going to represent everything that is in Yahshua HaMashiach. It is so simple. It is so plain that even a wafering, an ignorant man of my, uh, of my nurturing can understand that. It's not difficult. Can I make it a little plainer? Well, let me move on then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To Helium 103, verse 1. Everything must come from within. He says, Baruch, Barak, I bow. He said, bless you. He said, oh, my nefesh, oh, my being, the substance of what life is. Not some of it. He said, oh, all. all my nefesh. And then he did not say that some. He says, and all. The Ruach HaKodash did not and was not poured out upon us. For the Ruach to speak of anything but that which has already been spoken. He said in all of the kingdom sound, you, you can see, I've seen the clips, what they call the royalty. When they serenade them before the people, the whole state is out. 
They bring out the finest of their military power. They bring out their chariots, especially there in Britain. When the royal family, what they call them, everyone is excited to see them. They smile and they're happy. It makes their day, it makes their year. And don't let them get close enough whereby they can say, Mr. Obama, his first election, he jumps out of that vehicle under the Secret Service protection, and he began to walk down that street in Washington. And the whole place erupted. I saw about five minutes of that. And they just erupted. People cried. The babies in their arm, they, will, they said that this would be the greatest experience of their life. Although they're not old enough to see it, but they were here. I can tell the baby, you were their baby. <laughs> I make it real for us. And yet all that is within me, we don't barach, bless him. We have nothing in us but the Ruach of his kingdom. All that is within me, I bow to his name. I sing, I rejoice, I delight. I will not be quiet if I had 10,000 tongues. No, we're not going to do it with one tongue. 10,000, you would kill everybody. You would destroy, you would destroy yourself if you had 10,000 tongues. Your lies will, they, they will, they will pollute. They already have polluted us. And they will destroy you. That's a fact. He said, all that is within me. He's put a kingdom power in us. And at the sound of the shofar, the kingdom, and the subjects of the kingdom, they bow and say, bless you, mighty one. Ah, hallelujah. You can't sit quiet on this. You can try. He said, everything within me, let it brach. When the king would go through the city, there would be a herald. And everyone stopped doing what they were doing. And everyone turned. And they fought for position on the street just to get a glance. Just look at it. Oh, I want to see Yeshua look upon his beautiful face. There to see Forever of the saving power of Yah. No, I'm not a singer, but we got a singer here. And he's going to sing. He saved him for the last time, the Akari. I know I can't sing, but I sing. Let me move on. I'm going to finish this today. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We shall bless his mighty name for we know that it comes from within, from the kingdom. Only the kingdom people will bless the one that is in authority. So if his rule or his governmentship is a rule of our minds, then we will bless him when we hear his name. The king is covered. We will bless him. The milak is coming. Hallelujah. Yah has shown us as a people that is in the should be in the captivity scattered throughout the nations of the earth that he has this profound favor as Azarkin taught us the favor of his great love of his Ahava he has a great favor for his people and the Nobi speaks here so eloquently yes girl, to explain this to us Ezekiel 11 19 he wants us to know one thing. That's why Yoshua said the kingdom of Yah is within. He has a kingdom. It is not prepared for us when we get over this. It is a now kingdom. It's not a yes uh, uh, over yonder their kingdom. It is a now kingdom. Look what the prophet says. Look what the yes girl Ezekiel says. Uh, 11 chapter verse 19. Yah said this is what I'm going to do for my nation. Even though they're in captivity. He says I will give north and again Ezekiel. 1119, I will give them lev ichad, I will give them one heart. I will give them one mind, I will give them one heart. He says, and I will put a renewed or a new, a hadash, a fresh, 
invigorated Ruach where? Within. You see, that's where he put his Ruach within. For the kingdom of Yah is within. I will not thought I will put my Ruach within. Hear up within you. And he says, I will take away. I want you to understand this now, the latter part. He says, I will take away the stony heart. He says, and I will give them, I will take out the stony heart of the flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh. Now, we think that that means that is old fleshy hearts we got. He says, I will give them a heart of bazaar. Can I tell you what that in details or what it means? He said, I will give them one heart. I will give them a heart of flesh. We know the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. But he said, I will give them a heart that is bazaar. I will give them a heart that is of the kindred spirit to one another. A heart of love. A heart of wicked. Because we have the power of the kingdom within. That's why we need men and the zakim, the elders, to search at words. Crack the dictionary open. You can't get up there and talk foolish and muttering. You got to talk from a position of authority. I may be ignorant, but today I speak from the position of authority. And I know what I am saying. I know what I'm saying. He said, I'm going to give you a heart that I've bazaar. It is the heart of kindred spirit. That's what the bazaar of Yah is. It is the heart of love kindness. It is the heart of the kingdom. It is a heart that has been nurtured by the kingdom. We still have the stoned damn wicked hearts. We don't have the kingdom power with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will give them that kind of heart that is bazaar. It will be other kindred. You know how you, we have some of you that have blood relationships here. And see how our hearts will be with what we call blood. That's what bazaar is. It is of the blood relationship. So my blood relationship with my natural brother, sister, should be my same relationship in the sense with my achotim. I'm not going to try to rape my sister, and I'm not going to try to rape the daughters of Tizayon. When my sister calls me, I tell her, shut your mouth, woman. You're going to listen to me. I don't play with her and talk and laugh. She knows that. She has visited here twice and says, shut your mouth, woman. Be quiet. Well, I say, woman, if I tell you again, I want you to be quiet, all right? And she knows I'm serious. Be quiet. I do the talking. And so when she calls me now, she knows to be quiet. You, you, what did you say to me last time? She doesn't run her mouth with me. He will give us that heart of flesh. It is a heart that is of kindred nurturing. It is a heart that represents a blood relationship with one another. Yes. You're my blood. Yeah. We are the same blood. Yeah. We are the kingdom blood, the blood of Yeshua. That's what it is. Yeah. You will see blood sisters. There will be preference for one another, blood brothers, blood sons, and blood daughters, and blood daddies, and blood mamas. Yes. It's just the truth. Don't sit here like yeah. hypocrites on me. Yeah. And when we have the one heart of the kingdom... Yeah. It is a heart that is bazaar. It is a heart of relationship. It is a heart of kindred. Do sisters disagree? We got three natural sisters here. You tell me they don't disagree and haven't been upset with each other? But that does not impede their blood relationship. Hell, because you disagree with me, so what? Grow up, man. Could act like a boy. You might as well love me. You might as well. I'll tell you the truth. I'll break it down with simplicity. That's the kind of heart he must give his nation. Listen. He says, and the way he began is by renewing Hadash, the Ruach within us. Within us. Verse 20. Why, why he must do this? Do you understand the kingdom? We all must all walk the same way. For what reason? That they may walk in my statutes, in my ordinance, uh, and he says, uh, do them. That they may assa, that they may perform and 
fashion themselves according uh, to the dictates of the king. That they may do them. Uh, he said, they shall be my people and I shall be their part. You see the great king of Israel? He has a kingdom. Uh, if we outside of that kingdom, he is not our part. If we outside of the kingdom, the kingdom must be within. We must be in the kingdom of Yah. It can't be something that is coming. It is now. He said, I'll be your king. And you will be my subjects. Then what he says in the next verse. And I will not. I will put my rock. That's why Yahshua says, I must go. Can't leave you comfortless. He said, I will pray, I will make palah to the above, and he shall send you the comforter. And when he is come, you will know that God has visited you. This is a theme throughout Torah. He says, and I will put, I will not that I will put my ruach where? Within you. 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 And look, he says, I will put my, uh, uh, you, he says, uh, he said, they shall be my people and I shall be their Abba. He, he, he solidifies this. I got a little head. Turn quickly to the 36th chapter, same book in verse 27. It says, here, he says, here, I want to read this. Ezekiel 36, 27. He says, I will put my Ruach within you. And this is what he says. He says, I will cause you. See, that's what the Ruach does. That's what the kingdom power does. He said, and I will cause you. Does it say that in Yeskel Ezekiel 36, 27? When he put the kingdom power in us, it will cause us. He said, I will cause you to halach, to walk uh, in my statutes. Uh, and you shall keep my mishpat in my judgments. Uh, and he said, you shall do them. Uh, he said, when I put this kingdom power in you, uh, it will cause you to do it. Uh, you don't need no motivation to do it. It will cause uh, you to do it. I will cause you to do it. Uh, I'm the king. I will cause you to do it. Uh, that's why we must examine the book. You can examine one verse and think you've got an understanding, man. Uh, you read a little something you want to show off what you have read. That's ignorance. Oh, I'm not finished. I'm going to finish this today, all right. He said, I will put it within you. Did he not say, I will put my ruach within you? And when I put it there, it will cause you. You think Yahshua gave us the ruach or the power of the ruach came after Yahshua to cause us to act silly and to be selfish and to be wicked? No, that is not. It caused us. Uh, the Ruach caused us to walk in the ma or the light uh, of the statues of the Torah of Yah. I don't have to go look at this. Uh, it's already in me. Uh, and that's what the light of uh, the Ruach turns me to what's uh, within me. Uh. I don't need no man to teach me that. Uh, it's in me. Even as a child, we ain't made it with that. Uh, we know what's right and what's wrong. It's only because we get shaped in iniquity uh, and we began to turn away from it. That's what his ruach will, will cause us to walk. It will cause us to walk. It will cause us to halak, to strive to go in the direction to do that which is right. It will cause us to walk. It will cause us to walk. So I'm glad that other night that I was falling asleep, but I had to go back. You understand? I had to go back to the book. I'm not a pretender. I'm not trying to rob anyone. If I rob you, what, what am I going to get if I rob you? That is so stupid. What am I going to gain to try to abuse and take advantage of y'all's people? That is so stupid to me. Are we that nigga we can't tell when someone is genuine and sincere? We can't tell that. I guess we're so used to fakeism that we're so fake. We don't even know what is genuine. We're so fake. We don't know when something is real. You're not going to get a real Louis Vuitton bag for $100. Even a criminal would not say you want for that. You get a fake one. And I wouldn't have the faggot's bag anyway, you daughters of Tizayon. $2,500 for a bag for what? It's silly. You go buy $800 Farragoma belt, that's silly. I got a place where you can, you can have your belts made to your size for ten dollars, and they're better than the belts in Walmart. Old leather. 
give you whatever color bucket you buckle you want and the buckles don't tarnish after a while you gonna spend a thousand dollars for a belt you silly boy you silly woman stupid so we're so used to fake stuff we don't know when something is genuine we're so used to listen to folly that when a messenger speak we don't know how to buy it hallelujah that's just the truth Yah says and I will cause you to walk in my Torah and the light the rejoicing of the statues you will shema you will guard my mishpatim the judgment you will guard that and you will fashion yourself and do all that I command it's one thing we must understand their attributes or their significant characteristics of the kingdom and I want to show you some that the kingdom is not I began here in the book of Romeo hallelujah these are the aspects of the kingdom Romans chapter 14 verse 17 Romans 14 17 Jaus speaks so profoundly he says for the Melchut, the Melecha, the kingdom of Yah, is not in meat and drink. So don't think you're going in the kingdom and you're going to sit down and drink and your flesh is going to be fat. It is not in meat and drink. But you will know when there is the kingdom power begun to be nurtured in you. But it is in Sadiq, it is righteousness. It is the command of the Torah for your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Did we not read that? And your Torah is the truth for the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. Because we gather for the feast days, that doesn't mean that, that we're congregating in the kingdom truth or the kingdom power. Because we ate and we had something to drink. He said, that's not the kingdom power. It is not in eat and drink, but it's in the power of the great uh, Sadiq, the righteousness. It is an everlasting righteousness. It's amazing that uh, we as a people that we will intrigue others. Uh, we will see others come. Uh, we will be remorseful for them to leave. We will cry and all that. And even among Israel, we don't even cry for the beauty of our Ohot, our Achim. We won't cry for them. And I see that, I say, how sad is that? I shall. So you know we don't have the kingdom power. If I cry for her leaving, I cry because he is in my presence. If I cry because she left, I cry because she's here with me. Same thing. And yet we'll weep and we'll cry. See, that's meat and drink. You enjoyed eating and drinking. But when we do things in the righteousness, we know we're in the kingdom. We know the kingdom of Yah is in us. When we do what is right by who? We must do right by all men. We do right by all men. We know we have the power of the kingdom. And what it produces, shalom. So I have shalom with my ach. I see them in the kingdom. I say, hey, man. How you doing? Get home late, my friend. I haven't seen you in the last two days. Hey, are you all right? Zakin, how you doing? That's the kingdom. It's not in meat and drink, but it's in Sadiq and Shalom. You know you're in the kingdom when you have Shalom one with another. When you have a covenant or, or a Brit of great Shalom of confidence in each other. You know you're not in the kingdom when we, we barely even speak to each other. You know that you have nothing within you. Huh? And yet when that is strange to even this house, you cry when, when, when they leave. And yet you don't cry when you see one go out or, on a mission for you. It's so silly. No, I'm not taking it back. I'm showing how the fallacy of the heart of Yisra'ya. And I know I'm speaking the truth. I'm speaking to this house. You that are listening. Hell, we'll weep over our wicked sons and our daughters. Talk to me. And yet when it comes, we don't just weep for the gladness to see my young, ach, beautiful family say, ah, my friend, <laughs> how you doing? How's everything? We don't do that, Yisra'ya, for that is not the kingdom. You're not in the kingdom. It's not meat and drink, but it's in righteousness. And above all, it is the power of shalom. And then look at this, joy, joy, shimcha, joy in the Ruach HaKodesh. I got joy in my nether day and night. I got joy bells ringing deep down in my Ruach. I got joy, 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 joy. Joy in my nefesh. I got joy, joy in my Ruach. Yes, I do. Oh, 
Joy in the morning, joy in the noon day, joy day and night. See, we don't have, we, we are pretenders, but we don't, we think we got something, Israel. But we're deceiving ourselves. We don't search the Torah. And we are the ones that testify of it. We search our lies and fall in there. Fall in, but we don't search this book. I search the book. You know he said, I don't, I don't care what he said. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that, Rafi. I don't, I don't want to hear it, okay? Hallelujah. Joy. That's joy. You know when someone's in the kingdom, joy in the uh, They don't have that. They don't have anything. You can pretend and kid yourself all you want to. I'll read it again. Shall who say, for the kingdom of Yah is not in me, meat and drink. But this is the kingdom. It is in Sadiq. These are the characteristics of the kingdom. These are the aspects. Shalom and joy in the Ruach. And he remembered the Ruach he had placed in Moshe. It caused his heart to rejoice. You don't have joy in the Ruach. You don't have the joy. You don't have the joy in life and the breath of life. You have nothing. You don't have the kingdom within you. You're flat out liars, you're pretenders, and you're false. And that's just a fact. You can say whatever you want to. You can sell that to someone else and they buy it, but I will not buy it. I will examine all things. Uh, that's why he said, I will put my ruach and cause you to walk in the statue. Also, it's mishpatim to judge. And I make judgment because I'm a spiritual man. I judge all things. And I don't care if you judge me. It doesn't offend me if you judge me. Well, he's so wrong about that. Tell me how many times you've been wrong about it. How many times you've been wrong with your ark? Tell me how many times you've been wrong with your ahot. So don't give me that bull, okay? Hallelujah. It's not. This is the characteristic of, of the kingdom. Shaul writes to the gathering of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 4.20. Move with me quickly. Then I want us to go to Colossia chapter 1. I want to read this quickly. 1 Corinthians 4.20. He said, for the kingdom of Yah is not in word. Oh, I got the kingdom in me. It doesn't mean anything. He said, but it's in koach, it's in power. There's life and death in the power. In the power of the tongue. For the tongue speaks of that which is abundant in the heart of man. Out of the theft, out of the mouth, comes the abundance of the left. If the mind is a mind of kingdom construct, you talk about the kingdom. If it's of the kingdom of darkness and hell and wickedness, you talk about dark things. If you love Yah, you're going to talk about the things of Yah because you consume with it. Your mind is on in day and night. If you're full of folly, you're going to talk about the frivolous things. So the power of the kingdom is not in words. Oh, I love Yah. It means nothing. But it's in power. It's in the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you stride. You can say it all you want to, it means nothing. You can convince yourself all day long, it doesn't convince Yah. We got to understand the simplicity of this Torah. It doesn't impress him one bit at all. Oh, I love you. Don't tell me you love me. I tell you, don't, don't tell me. Them folks, I don't care if they tell me they love me. They don't I want you to tell me you love me. Don't tell me. No, no, no. Oh, I want to, no, 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 don't tell me. Don't tell me. That's all right. You tell me some other time. You tell me when you learn what love is. You don't love Yah. When you love Yah, you're going to do you right. And when you do you right, you're going to do you right. And when I do you right and love you, I'm going to love you. So don't give me that. The commandments are equal. The same commandments. You know you're walking in the kingdom. When you see the body, when you see the rejoicing of the body, it is one body. Mama, I got ingrown toners, but I don't hate them. I, you know, I kind of got them whereby they don't bother me as much. I've learned the technique quite well. You understand? I can't let nobody cut them off for me. I have to do it myself. I can't let nobody cut mine. But I got them precisely managed because it's been the nurturing and the careful attention and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Things you're going to have to cut off, Yisra'ya. It's not, the kingdom of Yah is not in words. Oh, I got the Ruach in me now. They saw the miracles of Yahshua and the miracles of the, of, the, of the Talmudim. And they said, surely the kingdom of Yah is come. That is what the power of the miracles represented, the kingdom of Yah. The kingdom was with us. 
And then the power of his great Rafa is healing, his great nurturing. We know that we're in the kingdom. When the word nurtures us daily and all day, it is our strength. It transforms our mind. It transposes us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We know we're in the kingdom. You don't need no feeling for that. You don't need no quickening and all of that. You don't need that folly. You don't need that. You know you're in the kingdom. You know you're walking in the light of the kingdom. You will know that. There's evidence of the kingdom power in his people. Can I read this as I said? Colossians, uh, Colossia, Colossians 1, uh, hallelujah, and verse 12. Colossians 1, 12. Now I want you to hear this. Now just examine your heart momentarily and see if we do this. It tells us to give huda or toda. Huda or hudu is the expression of great gladness of thankfulness with rejoicing. Now we don't hardly do that. Now, we don't hardly do that. Yeah. It get, tells us to give hudu or toda, give toda to Yah the Abba. That's the first prescription. We must give and offer the praise of toda unto Yah. We do it when we gather in the places that you do or you hear something. Uh, it is not something that reverberates out of us because we're not sincere. It's not genuine. It's just not genuine. It tells us to get hudu or torantia, which has made us to be meat or has prepared us to be partakers uh, of the inheritance of the Yisraelite Kiroshim uh, in light. We are the ones we have been brought in, although we're in captivity, we have been uh, cast aside, uh, and those that have kept the righteous state of their place, uh, he has brought us in, even among the Gentiles and the nations, uh, that we will know that we have an inheritance uh, of the ma or a light of rejoicing uh, that is profound, that the world sees us uh, as a great entity of a city that sits upon a hill, that it cannot be here. We have, uh, we have flame fragrance in us, uh, we have saltiness, we have value in us. He said he has delivered us from the power, from the power of darkness. And then he has, he has translated us. He has moved us from one place and positioned us to another. This is what it says, doesn't it? Then that's why we should give hudu or toda unto Yah, because we know that He has translated us, removed us. Uh, he has changed the situation in our lives, uh, in everything, all the deformative He has He has eradicated. He has translated us. Uh, he has translated us uh, into the kingdom of His dear Son. Uh, either we're in the kingdom uh, or we're still in the kingdom of darkness. Uh, either we're in the kingdom uh, or we're in the kingdom of darkness. Uh, either we are walking in the kingdom truth uh, or we're still walking in our darkness. He has, Abba, he has removed us. He has translated us. He has caused us to pass over. He has to cause us to go beyond that. Come on, I, you must go beyond your juvenile state of mind when you were that age or that age. As you progress, you go beyond that. You're getting closer to the power of the kingdom. That even in death, you welcome death. Even in any kind of destruction, you welcome that, Yisraya. That's the truth. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I'm so glad that is not the kingdom to come. And that kingdom that shall come, it is the fulfillment of this kingdom within. That's what it is. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's what he has done. He has placed Zachin Yaramiya, he expressed to us concerning the rod. And the scepter, the shebet. He has placed a shebet, a rod, a shebet, a staff, in the midst of Yisraya, the promises that he granted unto our forefathers, with Yaakov. And there's a particular scripture I want to read here in the book of Hebrews, Ibram, Hebrews 1 8. And to understand the promise of this one verse here, we must go back to the better sheep. I want to read this. Hebrews 1.8, and I want you to hold Genesis, better sheet 49, all right? It says in Hebrews, 
Hebrews 1 and 8 and Genesis 49. It says in Hebrews 1 and 8, he gives us the measurement of the Mishra, the government, and the rule of the kingdom. He says, but to the son, to Yahshua, Omar Yahweh says, he says, your kese, your throne, your throne, oh yeah, is forever and ever. His throne is forever. He doesn't change. And he tells him here, he says, and your scepter. See? He said, it is one of Sadiq, of righteousness. He said, it is the scepter or the shebet. It is the mark of your authority. See, that's the mark of the authority of the kingdom power. That we do right. We know when we began to yada and experience what is right to do, we do it right. When we don't do it, we know that we're defined, yeah, we're sinning. And when we sin willfully, there remains no offering for our sins. When we defy what the Torah said, we know his scepter. We know the scepter of Yah, it is a scepter of righteousness. It is a righteous scepter. That is the strength, that is the shebat, or the mark of his authority. It is his righteousness. Thy righteousness, David says, is an everlasting righteousness. The same words that reverberate out of the mouth of Shaul. For we know that your scepter is a scepter of righteousness. That he said your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And your Torah is the truth. It can never depart out of the kingdom. The scepter of his righteousness. It can never. Because he promised that. Unto the house of Yisrael. To the true kingdom. And it reads quite frankly here in Bereshit Genesis chapter 49 and verse 10. The promise of the scepter. The prophecy whereby Shaul spoke of. And the commands that Yaakov blessed the house of Yisrael with. He says here in Bereshit Genesis 49.10. He said, your scepter, your shebet, your mark of authority. Now, who's in the authority in our hearts? Is it ourselves or is it Yah's kingdom power? He said, your scepter shall not depart from Yahuda. And then he says, uh, nor even the lawgiver, the hacha, the one that speaks to us the beauty of Torah, the one that commands the decrees of Yah out of Torah. He said, neither the lawgiver from between his feet until who? Until Shiloh. Until the power of the tranquility of the Shalom covenant with Yisrael Yah until his Shalom fill our minds. He said, there will always be a lawgiver. He said, it shall not depart out of your huda. He has made us to be a blessing and riches of the kingdom, Yisra'ya. He says, shall not part unto Shiloh or Shiloh come. He says, and in him and to him shall the gathering of the people be. Unto him shall the gathering. Unto Yahshua HaMashiach. He is our Shiloh. He, in him. Only in him, in that mind of the kingdom, do we find the tranquility of Yah, the shalom, the greatness of Yah's riches, of the abundance of his blessings. We have been taught here during this uh, time of Sukkot to enrich us with delicacies and fine meals, riches of the Torah, so simple, prepared minds and laboring in text. We have heard without any kind of excuse. Period. Until she look. Until the comfort of the kingdom be fulfilled in us. For his kingdom is within. His kingdom is in the heart of his people. Well, I don't believe that we, it takes all that. Well, I will search the Chronicles. In the words of Yahshua, 
We must eat the whole book. Take and eat this book. And when he ate, it was bitter in the belly. But the fragrance of the sweetness began to soothe the bitterness. I want to read one of the greatest commands, Torah. There's one approach you're sure to, to be inquisitive with his questions. In the book of Mark, Marcus. Mark chapter 12, 33. Inquiring of what is the greatest of all commandments. It commands us, as Yahshua says here in Mark 12, 33, and to love our Abba, to love him, not with some, but with all, with all the love, and with all understanding, and with all the nephesh, and with all the strength. That's what he says. These are the words of Hamashiach. He says, and to love your neighbor as himself. If you got this love for Yah, you know you love you. And then my re'ach, my neighbor, I love him as I love myself. Can I ask you, do you speak evil of yourself? Do you tell your hidden secrets of corruption? Do you tell everybody that? We are hypocrites. You see, you can't answer questions you think you know. You know that. You don't tell your little secrets, do you? You don't tell the hidden mysteries of darkness of your heart, but you know everyone else's. And you will publish everyone else's. You are wicked. And you that will be hearers of that, you're even more wicked. Because a liar hates every nephesh that it afflicts. You that are damn liars, you don't love even you. You afflict you. I'm not taking anything back. If my wife is a damn liar, she doesn't love me. If I'm a damn liar, I don't love my wife. If you're a damn liar, you don't love your children. A liar, Sunday, it hates. A liar hates everyone that is afflicted by their lies. I don't care how you embellish it. I don't care how you alter it. You have the mouth of Shekha, you're a damn liar. Your shoe is truth. He is the fullness of truth. There is no lie in him. And when you lie, you hate everybody. I hate liars. I'd rather deal with an adulterous man. If he said, man, I, I messed up. I said, man, I'll kick your head in. Come on over here. No, I'm not going to hug you. Don't you do it again, man. I'll break your back next time. And the one to lie to me say, oh, no, I've never done that. You lying swan. Get, get out of my face, man. You go ahead. I don't like liars. That's why very seldom allow people to come in and tell me what others that is always, no, no, go get that one. That has always been my rule. See, liars love liars, so they don't want to go get the other one. If I, what if I say, if I say, if I say something to him or him or anyone, I say, well, I've already said this to even him. That's the way I am. That's the way I am. That's the way I am. So all these years, I've always said, no, hold up, hold, hold. You brought this accusation against him. You can't even bring an accusation against one that is old unless it's in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Yeah. And what a witness is, you've got to see a, an impeccable character, character by the one that brought the accusation. Yeah. You see one that is full of folly, you say, go to hell, shut your mouth, you wicked boy. Yeah. Go get the one that you're bringing this against. Now that's not how we do it because, you know why we don't do it that way, can I tell you? Because we got something in us against him. So I want to hear what Zach and Yeramia say against him because I got something against him. You understand what I'm saying? I want to hear what he says against him because I got something against him. I want to hear what he says against him because I got something. Well, nobody knows but you and me. No, that's not the truth. He looks high. He sits high and he looks low. He sees every damn thing. And so he can come to me and speak against him with me. That's not the kingdom power. Because I got something against him. I'm too cowardly to tell him. You understand? And what is this you like got between him that it can be resolved? Uh, it's all right with me. It's not anything of that great magnitude or that major. What is it? Tell me! A liar hates every soul. I want to show something here now. And the reason we love liars is because we're liars. 
We usually love to intrigue the gossiper. Instead of this one being busy in her home, she's about gossiping and he's about gossiping. You don't even run your house, man. How, how can you gossip? Get your damn house right. Get it clean. I say this all of you bath, you that are listening, you must have clean homes. Hallelujah. Not just tidy, they must be clean. You must clean your homes. Your homes must be clean. Your homes must be spotless. You understand? Hallelujah. Throw the damn junk away. Hallelujah. And you Achim, if you have clean spirits, you want a clean home. I'm going, to have to, I'm going to have to visit your house one day. One day, maybe in the future, maybe 10 years from now, when I can't walk too far. See how it looks. Of course, I've heard, I don't know, that it's a man comes of the day when he should have been hunting. What are you doing, man? I'm cleaning house. Cleaning house? I'm not cleaning no house. I tell you, my office needs sweeping. Last night I said, Sammy, I am too lazy. Yes, they even sweep. I didn't sweep a thing. It's a mess in there. I don't want you cleaning it. I clean it myself. Don't touch nothing there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Liar hates everyone. So he says you must love Yah with everything. And the way you love Yah, you love you that way. And the way I love me, then he says to love my, my neighbor as himself. He said, you got to love them more than all the burnt offerings and the zebak. You got to love them more than that fiery thing of your lying tongue. Yes. I'm going to preach next year, but don't worry, I got something for us all. It says in Mark 12, 30, 34, and when Yeshua saw that he answered, discreetly, with such honesty and integrity. He said to him, ah, listen to what he says. You're not far from the kingdom of Almighty Yah. You're right at the kingdom door, boy. You're not far from the kingdom. And it said, and no man after that did even ask him questions. What is the greatest of the mitzvah? How do I know that I'm in the position of the kingdom way? I've done all these things. I've held fast to that. Yeshua said, boy, I want to tell you, you're not far from the kingdom. You're not far. That's the surest of our signs that we're not far from the kingdom. And we love Yah with all. We love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We should owe no man anything but to love them. We should owe no man. We should not rail against one. No, I rebuke men and women too. And I will not stop doing that. You're not far from the kingdom. When you love Yah with all your mind, your nephesh, your strength. You give that unto Yah and then you love me as you love yourself. You know your heart has been nurtured from within. And the expression of the kingdom power is without then you know you're not far from the kingdom, Yisrael. You know you're not walking far from the kingdom. When you don't do that, you're far from the kingdom. These commandments are equal in their strength and their beauty. For upon these two commandments hinge the entire order of the government of this kingdom. You're not far from the kingdom. If we don't do that, we're far from the kingdom. You just need the heart of flesh. The heart that is a kindred heart. A heart that is a brotherly and sisterly heart. That's what we need. Not a damn white boy's heart is evil. A damn black boy's heart is evil. You need that one heart, that bazaar, that kindred heart. A heart of flesh. Damn Jew heart is evil. Palestinian heart is evil. 
British heart is evil. Your heart is evil. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? Only y'all. Only y'all can know that wicked thing. And that's why he judges it constantly. And that's why the men like the messenger of Yah must speak. You will know that he's walking in the kingdom because he speaks constantly of the judgment of Yah. We're not going into the kingdom. We're going to be on the outside of the kingdom and those will be in and we're going to be on the outside looking in because we can't. We better stop our ways, Israel. We better stop them. We better stop them. A fraudulent liar is a fraudulent liar. If I would defraud him, I would defraud her. If I defraud her, I would defraud you. So a fraudulent liar is a fraud. They don't care who they fraud. They don't base things upon love. They just base things upon emotions for the moment. It's a sensual thing. And a damn hustler in my days, if they were false, they would sell you out. That's why I didn't like the young boys, unlike the old time hustlers. They at least had integrity with each other. They did. The cats I, I was around, they would give me my proper share. And they would not even make me do things that what they were doing. You just watch for me. That's what they would have me doing. You just watch. And so if something happens, you don't even know us. And yet they would give me the proper share and the equal shares, all of them. It wasn't about money with them. I'm just telling you the truth. We, what we did was wrong. It was crooked. But they gave me my proper share. They didn't try to rip me off. They didn't try to beat me. They gave me what they said. You stand there, baby boy, and just don't. You just give us a whistle, and you just go. Leave us. We got it. These were old hustlers. We're trying to protect you. Yet they were not trying to protect me, but they were trying to protect me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I expose this? You're not far from the kingdom. These things are not spoken quickly in the fourth chapter of Mark 4.11. Quickly, I want to read this because I want to get into the depths of whom the kingdom is given to and what is the benefit of the kingdom. I can finish this. You all just sit still and say, Yah, help me. It says in the book of Mark 4.11, And Yahshua said unto those that had heard the great parable of the sower, He says to you, to us, It is given to Yada the mystery, the wisdom of the kingdom of Yah. There's a specific people. You will know them by their attributes and what they do. In order for us to understand who is given to, we must search out the Torah to find it out. And you can do this in 10 minutes. You can do this by reading consecutively verse after verse. You can do this by picking out a verse and conform it to what you wanted to say. You can't do that. He says this. He said to you it is given no fun to Yahweh the mystery of the kingdom of Yah. He said but to them that are without. So undoubtedly there are those that are within and those that it is within. He said those that are without all these things are done in parable. I speak in a form of wisdom for them not to even know, for their ears not to be even opened. So I speak to you because this is within. I speak in a way in parables or, or in the mashal, in the mysteries of the Proverbs, that you will understand what I'm saying. And those that are without the knowledge and the truth of Torah, they will not understand. That's why people don't understand the power and the mystery of the kingdom of Yah. They're looking for something. He's given us everything. He's given us everything. He's given us everything. He's revealed unto us the power of his dear son. We have everything. There's nothing else we need. Nothing else. There was one that came before us. He was a mighty messenger of Yah. He speaks of this time. He speaks of the kingdom. He was wise above many. Shaul. And so he spoke the Mashel or the Mishli, the Proverbs. 
because it was within him. And then when he began to allow the association of his corruption, he began to move from the kingdom authority and began to raise up gods, the Lord Jesus and Be'en. He began to raise up gods to his wives and those that intrigued him sensually until his heart fell away from Almighty Yah. But he speaks with great, great clarity here in the book of wisdom. Wisdom. He gives us a great example of the power of the kingdom of Yah. Wisdom 6. In chapter 1, he tells us to Shemach, to hear there for. He says, I want you all kings to hear. Then he tells the kings to understand. This is for those that will precede them. He said, I want you to learn. He said, and you that judge, you that are the judges, or that shall judge the ends of the earth. We're here to judge the end of time. And you that will be around to judge the ends of times. He said, I want you to give ear. You that rule the people and that boast of the many nations. We are nations. We are royal priesthoods. And we are the nation and nations that makes up the composition of the nation of Yah. He said, I want you to give boast. Give ear. He says, for dominion or power and rule, he says, it is given. For the dominion of all things uh, is given to you from Almighty Yahweh. For any kind of kingdom is given to Yah. That's why we should not interfere with the kings, uh, his affairs. Uh, we should pray for the rulers and the kings. You don't interfere with Mr. Obama. You just pray for him, all right? Uh, that we can live quiet and peaceable uh, in this wicked nation of America. I didn't see it. Uh, the book said it. Uh, for dominion power is given to you uh, from Yah. And the sovereignty from the Most High, who shall try your works and search out your works and inquire into your plans. Yah searches out our works, he inquires into our plans, our conceited ways. He has a plan for the kingdom. And that's what the Ruach with them will cause us to walk in the kingdom truth of Yah. He said, because being ministers, being ministers. If he has a kingdom, he said, you are ministers. Obey them that have the rule over you. Because why? They are the ministers of Yah. He says, because being ministers of his kingdom, of Yah's kingdom. It doesn't look right over there in here in America, but it's his kingdom. What he means, he, this is his creation. He established it. Not the devil, he said, being ministers of his kingdom, uh, he established his kingdom to do just what he did. To bring folks into captivity, to rob, to steal. That's all right. Did he not raise up Misraim yes. for one purpose, to get honor upon his name? Yeah. Now let's not be silly. Let's not try to, let's not try to reason in our minds with Torah. Yeah. We have to be quick and sharp to understand what the book says. Yeah. So he raised up Egypt, did he not? Yeah. To get honor, did he not? Yeah. So he raised up Mr. Obama. And you don't touch his anointed. He's his Yazan. You are sure he is. I didn't mess with Mr. Clinton or Mr. Bush. I leave him alone. That's all right by me. He's going to give me shalom. I have a covenant of shalom with him. He says, uh, because being ministers of Yah, he says, you have not judged right, nor have you kept the Torah. See, every kingdom, every kingdom, his kingdom must guard the Torah. He said, not walk according to the counsel, my muzah, my correction, and the purpose of Almighty Yah. He will come horribly and speedily upon you because sharp, severe judgment shall be to them that are in the high places. When we began to exalt our minds above the mind of Yahshua, we should let the same mind that was in Yahshua it shall be in us. We began to exalt our minds over that mind, over the kingdom mind. Then there shall be sharp and severe judgment upon us. Death is going to ensue us and overtake us. It is not just the physical death, which is the ultimate climaxing of that. It is the spiritual death. 
There's no joy. There's no delight. We're dead. We walk in trespasses of sin. We take no joy in suffering. Don't you know it tells us through tribulations, through great sarah, great trial, we enter into the kingdom. And so our trials are to cause us to enter into the kingdom mind, into the kingdom riches, and to the kingdom blessings. And so nobody wants to go through anything. Oh, my trouble. You have no troubles. And a woman called me from England. I said, woman, stop that. Just shut your mouth. Hallelujah. Well, the men, they have loved me. I say they haven't loved you. How can they love you and they abuse you and did you wrong? Hallelujah. I say, you don't even know what love is, woman. I say, you got plenty of lust. Yeah. You should say, she sure can talk, but I said, shut, no, no, stop. Because I'm not going to hear your little old stories. Oh, things are so hard. Stop your lying. They're hard because you are transgressing the kingdom, the provinces of the kingdom. That's what we're doing. Hallelujah. I'll get to that. Don't worry. Hallelujah. And so this shall be the reward of his nation, his people. It shall be a horrible, swift judgment. And the judges kept not the judgment. He gave, he put that kingdom power within that we understand constantly judgment brings us always before him. Always. You know, before someone can visit Mr. Obama in the White House, there, there must be what they call a vetting. They must search up. They will go back to when you were born. They will see if you said to the, to the teacher, I don't like you. And if you said that, you can't get in. They will know the first time you, you poop poo. I'm just being honest. When they vet you, they know everything about you. And that would be folks dig up things on you. Oh, yeah, when he was eight years old, he did. Oh, yeah, that boy was a bad boy. Mm-hmm, 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 It is a process called vetting. And you just do not go into what they call the White House. So they vet them. The FBI, the CIA, do a research and search out the nooks and crannies of your life. And if you got some hidden skeletons, you don't want to go to the White House. You want to go to the cleansing house, the potter's house. That's where you want to go, all right? You got some mess in your life, you don't want to go to the house. You want to go to the potter's house, all right? That's where you want to go. I, I want to conclude with one last thing. It's, it's, I want to show you what the life of the kingdom life consists of. It's in the book. You just can't read one verse and understand it. And there's a plethora of scripture. I have to refine things so that... I'm just not reading scripture. I have to explain things. But to understand the beauty and the dynamics of the life of the kingdom. I want to begin here in Revelation. Giliana. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 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 22. I want to read this quickly. And beginning at verse 1, Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. It says that the messenger de Melach, he showed him a pure river, Felech. The waters were crystal and clean. He showed Yochanan a pure river of water. It was the waters of life. He has granted that unto us. Now, just hold that. I want to read quickly the kingdom walk now. Psalms chapter 1. And hold that in Revelation 22 and verse 1. And I want to begin in verse 1 again. It says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the wicked. We must walk in the correction of the Muzah of Yah nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the mockers and the scorners of Yah, those that lie and corrupt themselves with no fear. But it tells us this, but his delight, his hafiz, is in the law, the Torah of Yah. That's where his delight is. And in the law does he meditate day and night. We don't meditate on the Torah of Yah. Let us just be real and genuine he said, when that man meditates on that, 
And he shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. And he shall bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever that man does, it shall shall lack. It shall prosper. Now you hear that. He's told about the kingdom. Now this is not something that's going to happen when we see the physical kingdom of Yah. This is not. If we walk this way, this is the power of the kingdom. Listen, Revelation chapter 22 verse 1. And he showed me a pure river. He showed me the philek of water. It is a water of life, of high, of high hill. It brings strength and nourishment. It is the source of the being that revived the ruach. He said it was bright as crystal. There was no contaminants. He should be planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit. Proceeding out of the throne of Yah and of the Lamb, Yeshua HaMashiach. And if our delight is not in the Torah of Yah, and we don't meditate on the Torah of Yah day and night, we're not going to be planted by the river. See, this river flows from the throne. This is a river in the kingdom. And this man that walks not in the counsel of the wicked, he's planted by this river. And that's where the true Sadiq are. They're planted by the river of Yah. And we nourish and we grow and we blossom. And the beauty is expressed of our kingdom delight. That's what it shall be. It's not something to come. It is the now truth. It's not even worth waiting for it. If I die in the power, it's now. It's now. What Yakahan spoke, this is what David spoke. Hear this. He said again the word here, in the midst, in the center, in the midst. He has put his Torah in the kerep, in the midst, in the center, in the inward part. Look what's in the midst now. In the midst of every kingdom, in the midst of the kingdom, in the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, he said there was a tree of life. You find the power of Yeshua HaMashiach, which bear the twelve fruit, which bear twelve fruit, and yield of fruit every month. Psalms 1 and 3 says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Does it say that? That bring forth his fruit in his season, the fruit of healing. He shall eat from the tree of the healing of Yah. The fruit of, 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 of rejoicing. We've got to understand how to tie this all together. He said that twelve amount of fruit and yield of fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were the healing of the nation. And the leaves. And his leaves shall not wither. And the leaves of that one shall not wither. They shall not wither because there is fruit. Because there's life. And only in the kingdom, Yisraya, this river, when one is in the kingdom, one drinks from this river. He's not going to stand. She's not going to walk in the council of the wicked. That's why our leaves are withering. We have no life of his substance in us. We have no truth of his great love in us. Hallelujah. That's just the truth. There's a people. He has a people of his kingdom. It, it would be a shame for him not to have a kingdom within this earth. Huh? He has a kingdom. Who are the people? You want to know who those are of his kingdom? I'll show you. They're in Revelation. Gilianam. And then we're going to take it a little farther than that. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. He says, Barak, blessed are they that do his commandments, that are saw that fashion their minds after the wisdom of the mitzvah, the commandments of Yah, that they may have a right. See, you what it says, they may have a right to the tree of life. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, but his delight is in the Torah. What? Where did Daivi say the Torah was? It is in what parts, did he not? So his delight, or he shall eat those that do his commandments. Or, or that means that when we get to the kingdom or in the city over there, no, we eat from the tree. No, I will show us that do his commandments. That they may have a right to the tree of life and they may enter through the gates of the city. Not everyone could come into the city of Yerushalayim. They cannot come within the gates. You cannot bring the burdens into the gates of Yerushalayim. You cannot bring your sin on the Shabbat. You cannot bring that. 
That's why next Shabbat, I got something to teach us. There was one that made a statement about me that I'm not trying to correct the person's statement. It's just ignorant. And because they don't love Yah, and they, don't, they would not know a true messenger if he kicked them in the head. You understand? But I'm going to show you how ignorant next week, how ignorant people are of Scripture. Hallelujah. He says, And those to him that overcome will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Almighty Yah. So you tell me that you're sure, as he said to us, take my flesh, is meat indeed and my blood. You tell me we're going to have to wait over somewhere. So just as Jackson said, yeah, we, we're not looking for the pie in the sky. No, this is a noun truth. We must eat this lechem, this bread. We must eat it. Now, and that's the truth. There's a great reward. He tells us some of the rewards here, doesn't he? Now, there's a prophet that gives us great insight. His name is Hanak, Enoch. Enoch, Enoch chapter 25. I'm going to read verse 1 through 7. I'm getting tired. Hanak, chapter 25, verse 1 through 7. And the Melak, the messenger, Ya Melak said to me, he says, Hanach, Enoch, Enoch 25.1. He says to me, Enoch, what is that you are asking me concerning? Eh? See what he says, the fragrant, the great fragrant of this tree. What is this great fragrant? Beyond the ability to comprehend this, we try to fragranize our home, but it just doesn't work. He said, what is this great fragrant? As one would say, the savor, unquote. What is this great fragrant of this tree? He told us who shall eat from that tree. What is the fragrance of this tree? And you are so inquisitive about it. I don't blame him. The fragrance is beyond my capacity of my nostrils uh, to comprehend the beauty of his fragrance. It is such a wafering of smell that it caused my nephesh to delight greatly. The messenger said, at that moment, I answered, uh, saying, I am desirous to know everything, uh, but especially about this tree. See, Yahshua has revealed unto us that those that keep the mitzvah of Yah and do love his commandments, that we shall enjoy the fragrance of this. He said, I want to know. I don't want to smell the dung or the stench of my flesh that has been corrupted. And the foulness of my own corrupt kingdom that is stinking. That is stinking, so stinking my breath is odorous. I don't want to hear that. He answers saying, This tall mountain, this hair, which you saw, whose summit resemble the throne of Yah. He said that high place that you see. That is the magnitude of the height of the Yah, throne of Yah. Is indeed his throne. On which the Kodash and the great sovereign master of majesty, the eternal king. He's a king. He has a kingdom. He cannot be a king without a kingdom. Huh? And the power of his kingdom is in our hearts. In Allah. Who sits when he descends to visit the earth with his great pleasure, with his tongue. And as far as the fragrant tree, not, not one, not a single human being has the authority to touch it until the great judgment. You understand? You see what? You see in the kingdom there must be a constant judgment. We don't want great judgment. Don't judge my son. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Until the great judgment. Until the great judgment of Yah. No one is going to touch it. He allows us to eat. He allows us to eat from Torah Yisraya. We eat from the fragrance of this tree. And it, and it makes things sweet. Even though in great tribulations. Uh, we enter into the kingdom. And the great trials. Uh, it is a sweet thing to suffer for him. Uh, he said when he shall take vengeance on all. Uh, and conclude everything forever. He said this tree is for only one. I'm so glad. He said this tree. This is for the. Sadiq, for the righteous, 
for the righteous and the high year a high life he says and the elect the book here will be presented with its fruit for life he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water his fruits we need labors in the Torah Yisrael we need these high-minded men to shut their damn mouths and be quiet and quit trying to pontificate as though they have knowledge and learn and read one verse and think they got knowledge of the book that's so ignorant no you're not going to hear like this today no you're not are you boasting no you're just not going to hear like this and they need to stop pontificating as though they have knowledge of things and they're trying to conclude with the fuel of scriptures and a chronological sequence. It doesn't work that way. You got to get here a little, there a little, here a little. And it almost be complicit to that topic and that subject. And everything I'm teaching today is in appliance with the kingdom. He says, he will plant. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Is that what that means? He, he will plot it in the direction of the northeast upon the Kodesh place in the direction of the bed of Yah, the eternal king. See, that's where we plant this tree of life. That's where we plant. He is in the north. He is in the rush of our minds. He shall be the, he shall be the root of our minds. He, he is the tree of life. Uh, and he shall be planted in our minds, in our hearts, day and night, all night, all day. Every, he shall be planted there. And he shall be planted there. For from that rush goes out the great praises unto Yah, Yisrael. Then they shall be glad and rejoice in gladness. And they shall enter into the Kadosh place. Its fragrance shall penetrate their bones. As they say, oh, I just feel it in my bones. The fragrance. When you stink with wickedness. It's in your bones. Yeah. When you're funky like a dog, it's in your bones. Yeah. When you have the sweet fragrance of Torah, it's in your bones. Yeah. And your sweetness prevails against everything. There are folks that are so sweet and kind, even when people do their own, they say sweet. And there are us, I would say me, that we are rotten like beasts. We're nasty. We don't know how to be kind. I, I, I subjugate myself to every judgment. We don't like to do that. Because I say, help me, yeah. You understand? So I'm subject to every judgment. Judge me. I know his judgment is right. It's for my strength. And we have such stench in our bones, no fragrance, no sweetness. We pretend we're damn hypocritical and we're phony as hell. When we get this kingdom in us, that fragrance that flows from our bones. Isn't this simple? Hmm? Isn't this simple? It shall be fragrance. Hallelujah. Shall penetrate the bones. Not only that, but long life would they live on the earth. Such as your fathers lived in their days. Yah says at that moment, as Hanak says, he says, I brought Yah, told Yah for the sweet fragrance of the tree of Yorkshire, the tree of life. He said that morning I blessed him and the eternal king, for he has prepared such a thing for who? For the wicked? For the righteous people. He has prepared such a mighty blessing for the righteous people. You don't get this unless you're righteous for the righteous people. For the righteous people. And he has created them and given it to them. Hell, that's why he made us. That's why he made us, sister Ayah. To give it to us. And we sell out for what? Nothing. We sell out for our stupidity. For our childish juvenile ways. He made that. That tree is there for us. There's healing there. To heal us, to heal us, to heal us, to heal of us our ills. I'm so glad. I'm going to close in a minute. There's one thing that Evangel Hartsfield pointed out to me as a young man. 
I'm glad. I bless him. If I never see him, and I may not ever see him, he will look at me and say, you are a silly little juvenile boy. You immature. Shut your mouth. And that was the strength of my maturity. I didn't get mad at him. I will love him even the more when he will straight me out. I didn't disregard what he said because he was wiser than me. He told me things back then that I heard no other man say. He was a wise man. He was. His ignorance was not as pronounced as mine. He said, get that crazy little boy moody spirit off of you. He said, look at him. He's silly. You doing that in front of my woman like that man? You doing that to me in front of my woman? And I would find me a place of recluse. And I would just weep and cry. And say, yeah, I don't want to. I won't be like that. But he did not spare me. You silly little boy. That's what he was going to say. You silly little boy. You got to understand now what I'm 58 years old. He was about 45 then, 46. So looking at that, you're not looking at a great disparity of age, especially when you're 25, because you think you know everything. You silly little boy. You should look at him. He would do it in front of my, my woman. Look at him. Look at that little boy. <laughs> you silly little boy. And then he's sitting in my house. Eating the food that I bought. And I just look at him and say, I love this man so much. And I did. I loved him for that. I loved his honesty to me. He didn't do the other ones like that, but he did me like that. I'm so glad. I'm so glad he did me like that. I'm so glad for judgment. He has created all this for those that are the righteous. I want the fragrance of the aura and the odor of Yeshua to flow from my bones. You understand? Get it all down in my bones. That's Yeremia says like fire. But those are the Cantonese region of China whereby they eat a lot of the spices. It's a, it's a country, it's a city region whereby they very seldom see the sun. It's cold. It's gloomy. So they literally say that eating the chilies, it really does something for your bones. And they get out, and the old people, they exercise every day. I said, maybe I need to try some more chili. Get me some of that chili pepper. Maybe we grow a little more. It has its medicinal purposes. I want to close with this, all right? Hallelujah. 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 Uh, there's so much. Zakin Yerami, I was saying. Let me read this last verse in Shirak. I'll hold off on the other. And Yah's will, these Achim, they teach this. And they probably can teach it because they have an element of this wisdom much greater than me. So maybe next year we will teach the kingdom. All right? How about that? Just the kingdom. That's a nice ring. Now, if you choose that. Hear this. I want to read this in Shirak. Chapter 19 and verse 19. I want you to mark this. Shirak 19 and verse 19. It tells us that the da'at, the knowledge of the mitzvah of Yah, the knowledge of it, the wisdom of the doctrine or the teaching of the commandments of Yah, it is the doctrine of life. Without the knowledge of Torah, you have no life in you. Without the Torah, you have no kingdom within you. He says, the knowledge of the commandments of Yah is the doctrine of life. And they that do these things, that please Almighty Yahweh, shall receive. Listen now. We just talked about Hamak, the tree, didn't we? He said, they shall receive the tree of immortality the tree of the kingdom well this is something that is new 
last thing I want to read. Bereshit, Genesis 2 and 8. And Yah Araba planted he Nata, he established in the midst of the garden, east, eastward in Eden, and there he put, see, in the middle, in the center of his kingdom will, he put Adam and, and he, Adam whom he had formed. And out of the ground, yeah, he was the one that made to grow every tree that is hamad, that is pleasant, that one takes pleasure in, that is pleasant to the sight for tov, and they were excellent for food including the tree of life also of the garden and the tree of knowledge and tough and evil. It was only then when there was no bona fide repentance of one's sins that Yah cast out. That's why he said, the woman made me do it. And so the covering of their sins were covered with the offering of that little lamb in the midst that Yah even made them clothing. What are the clothing of Yah, his sadiq? And in the kingdom, you must be clothed in the clothing of Sadiq. You cannot be clothed any other way if you think that you're walking in the kingdom light. And when you're clothed in the clothing of Sadiq, there is a fragrance that flows from your bone. Instead of save all, it is the fragrance of Yah. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. In your sure smart your name, may He strengthen the bosom of His nation. May He cause our hearts to grow fat. And may he cause you to delight in all things in Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, since the blessings of Yah that I feel my heart today because hallelujah. sin and offering, I know you've been blessed today. Yah Barak, Yah Davis and all you that are gathered with him out there in Los Angeles, we greet you all, the house of Yahweh there. Yahshua's mighty name, wherever you're listening, we greet you all. Uh, Jeff, you and your family, we greet you in your Yeshua's mighty name, uh, Yaakob, in Florida, and also in Texas, wherever you're listening, our Ochot's Mariana, riches of your rest upon you and your Yeshua, our Ochot, Sylvia, may he strengthen you richly and cause your heart to be fat in the delight of your Yeshua and all of you, our friends, and my enemies, I hope you got enough today. May Yah barak you all, let us stand to our feet. We turn toward Yarusha Lightning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. In all things we do barak you our abar. For the magnificence and excellence of simplicity. We want, we don't want the things that are monumental because the simple things we can build upon that. We pray that you barak your nation, your people, wherever they are scattered in every nation, throughout the earth, every nation, in the Americas, in Canada. There in on the continent of Africa, in the Philippines, there in Britain, in in in, in France, every nation, Portugal, in the islands of the sea, uh, and uh, in places like Hong Kong and China, everywhere, Yah, we pray for your nation. There in the land of Israel and Palestine, your people, we pray for their strength. Down in South America, in your sure smarty name, give us guidance today and rest. As we enjoy this beautiful Shabbat Tant, give us guidance in all things in your surest name. May your will be done, your pleasure rest upon us all. In the blessed assurance of that name, Yeshua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.